Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and it's been about a year since I shot the video that has become the most popular video on my channel, and that is how you can use an HD Home Run Prime, it's a product from Silicon Dust, uh, to basically avoid paying Comcast a lot of money a month in cable box rental fees. Basically, it allows you to use your own equipment to watch the channels that you're paying for from Comcast. Go figure. So this is not a free cable scheme. It's not you know, something that's illegal. Uh, this is completely legal and allowable. In fact, you have to get a cable card from Comcast. They give it to you. Uh, in my case, I'm getting a credit for using my own equipment. So not only am I not paying rental fees, I'm actually pay I'm getting about a $2.50 credit a month uh, because I'm using my own equipment. Uh, you take that cable card, you put it into the HD Home Run Prime, uh, you connect the Home Run Prime to your cable system, and then you plug the other end of the Home Run Prime into your uh, gigabit Ethernet network on your home network. And uh, what I did in my case is I connected a laptop I wasn't using running Windows 7 and Windows Media Center. And that seems to be the best solution right now if you're looking to set up one of these systems. Windows 8 has Media Center, but uh, not all of the extension boxes that you'll need for this project work with Windows Media, uh, Windows Media Center on Windows 8. So my recommendation is set it up with uh, good old trusty Windows 7. It'll be supported for a while yet, uh, and that will get you going. Now what I'm doing on my televisions, because I keep the laptop down here in the basement, uh, is I'm running uh, the Windows Media Center extender on an Xbox, in on one TV, actually two TVs have Xboxes connected to them, and then the third TV is running with a Seton Echo, and I did a review of that a few months ago. You can check that out to see how it works, but it's a little box, connects with USB power, USB voltage, uh, very unassuming. It only does one thing. There's no apps on it. So if you wanted like an all-in-one thing, uh, the Xbox might be the better solution. But uh, the Seton has been working great in my, on my third television. And what's really cool about this whole setup is that not only can you watch live television with a guide that actually is functional, unlike the garbage that Comcast will give you for an ungodly sum of money a month, uh, but I also have a synchronized DVR network as well because that computer over there is recording everything that I'm requesting it to record, and then those media center extenders can play it. So it keeps bookmarks as to where you left off on things. You can you know, start something on one television and continue, continue it on another. You know, everything is synchronized. It works. It's been working perfectly for a year, and I really haven't changed much since I started it. So I'm really just happy with how well it's been working. I do have a couple new things to show you that I haven't covered before, so I'll get to that. I do have a link in the comments below uh, where you can check out uh, all the videos I've done since I did that initial one to kind of see what I've been experimenting with over time. And I've done a whole bunch of cool stuff with this setup, and I'm sure I'll have more things to do in the future. So before I get into the two new things, which are uh, using Plex as a way to play back your DVR recordings when you're away from home, uh, and also a cool app from CTON that you can use to, to uh, set recordings on your uh, on your Windows Media Center. I just want to make a little bit of commentary because some folks uh, wrote in saying, oh, you're too cheap. You should just pay the fee and not worry about all this junk. And you know what? You know, and I don't normally get all you know, ticked off over trolls, but I get ticked off, though, because in this instance, you know, we as consumers have become so lazy that we allow these companies to just abuse us. And that is what's happening, uh, especially in the cable industry. The banking industry is no different. You know, they keep tacking on fees to all these check all our checking accounts that you know, we're, we're really becoming uh, almost you know, numb to is because every month there's some new fee. And I was just sick of it. You know, when I turned on my television one morning, which was not using a cable box, and I couldn't watch any of the channels that I was paying for, uh, it really irritated me that in order to get the value of my subscription, I had to pay them another $30 a month to hook up all my TVs and get going again. It just didn't feel like a good thing for me as a consumer to allow that practice to continue unabated. So that's why I made the video. That's why I went through the effort of setting this up. And quite honestly, a year later, uh, that effort I made on in literally a Saturday morning to set all this stuff up, uh, I've not had to touch it since. It just works. And it works better than Comcast's junk does. So uh, that is a uh, really, I'm telling you, this is the best thing you can do uh, and save yourself some money in the process. Um, my, my wife loves it. Everybody who comes to the house is really enjoying it. It's been absolutely perfect. So enough about that. But let's talk about Plex and how I'm using that. So what I did on that server over there, because that little laptop has got an i7 on it. So uh, what I hooked up to uh, that's the, uh, the laptop was a Plex server, and I pointed the Plex server at the directory where my Windows Media Center was recording its shows. And those are MPEG-2 recordings, but Plex, as you know, does real-time transcoding, and that means you can watch your DVR recordings on your iPad. Uh, you do have commercials, so you have to skip through them. I am going to try to find some kind of commercial skip thing perhaps down the road, but um, if you are recording things off of HBO or something like that, you get the ability to watch the HBO recordings that uh, you were entitled to make on any device you own. And the best part about Plex is that you can take your iPad off-site and watch this stuff anywhere in the world that you have an internet connection to, or if you're paying for, I think, I think it's still part of the premium package, 
If you're paying for the premium package, you can actually synchronize those things to play offline on your iPad when you hit the road. Like you can just hit a button, it'll do all the transcoding in the background and dump everything off to your iPad or Android tablet, which I find to be really, really cool. So um, Plex has been great for that. I've been able to catch up on some shows when I've been away on business or something, and that was really uh, fun to be able to do that. Again, with minimal effort, Plex just runs, it just works. And uh, again, I'm just amazed by how well all these things work. I do want to show you one last thing that, I've, that I haven't covered yet before, uh, and that's this neat little app from CTON uh, that allows you to program your Windows Media Center without having to futz around with the remote. So let's take a look at that real quick. So here is the CTON My Windows Media Center app, and this is a uh, cross-platform app in that it runs on just about every major mobile platform, Android, iOS, Windows Phone, as well as uh, on the Amazon Phone Store as well. So you can pretty much, if you've got a phone, it's not running BlackBerry, chances are you can get it to work on here. It's pretty uh, cross-platform. Now, what's nice about this is that uh, when you boot it up, it gives you kind of an at-a-glance thing as to what recordings are coming up and what is already been recently recorded. So I, I had Breaking Bad on here to set to record, and even though the series is off the air, it detected these binge bonus episodes, which I'm really not interested in, so I can just go ahead and cancel that recording, and it will wipe it out of there. And as you can see, it moved it down, and then it found another one. So I'm just going to show you in a minute how you can wipe out an entire series. What's nice about the app is that it gives you ways to manage your Windows Media Center without having to go around with the remote, and it organizes data a little bit differently, and it makes it a lot easier to set up things, delete things, or get a little bit more granular with how you want something to record. So uh, we'll step into the television menu, which is where a lot of this stuff happens. So uh, this is a list of all the recordings on the device. It's sorted uh, by when it was recorded. And then I can hit the filter here and kind of adjust the sort. So I could say, you know, sort it by title uh, and it's recorded on its air date, original air date, and hit done here. And now you can see it's, bre it's breaking it out uh, by series. And if I wanted to delete a recording, so I've already watched all these episodes of 24, I can just uh, go ahead and left swipe and tap the delete button and they're out of there. So uh, pretty easy to uh, clear off some space without having to go push a lot of buttons on your remote, uh, you're pretty much done. Uh, they have a channel guide so you can kind of look around the guide like you would anything else and you can then tap on an individual show and set to record it uh, or record the series. Uh, the uh, streaming, it has a thing where it says you can uh, tune to that channel. Uh, I found it doesn't work with my devices in the house for some reason. It's supposed to be able to detect all of your extenders and be able to basically have that extender uh, tune something from the app. It doesn't work for me. I have never been able to get it to work, but it might just be because this app is getting a little bit old and maybe they haven't updated it. But the other stuff like setting recordings and everything, uh, that does work really, really well. Um, you also have a list of channels that are available to you, and these are all coming off my uh, HD Home Run. Uh, you can even get an idea of what television premieres are coming up. So it's, it's just got some really great ways to try to find things that you might be looking for that you're not even thinking about. So if you wanted a list of upcoming premieres, it'll uh, put all that together for you as well. Um, one neat thing is the series management feature here too. So it'll pull up a list of all of the series that I have recorded on the device. It takes, you know, there's a little bit of lag sometimes when you're pulling down these menus, but once it gets up and running, uh, you should be able to see it. It also puts it in the order of priority that if it ever had a conflict on uh, one of the, uh, the channels that it was, uh, or you know, all the ports were used up, it will figure out the priority of what to record and when, uh, and you can go ahead and set that up here. I'm having a little bit of connection difficulties, but take my word for it, it does usually work, and I'm not sure why it's, it's misbehaving right now. Let's see if we can get this working. All right, here we go. It had a little glitch, but we are back, and as you can see, uh, this is a list of all of the series that I had set to record, and I can go in and actually delete them as, as if I wanted to get rid of something, and a couple of these, if I get rid of, uh, she will kill me. So let me find one that uh, we're not watching anymore. Uh, let's see, Almost Human. I'll just go ahead and delete that, and now all of those recordings that were set to happen with that show are now gone. So a uh, pretty easy way to uh, work your way through things. It also uh, looks at what movies are on tonight as well. It gives you little icons and what channels they're on. And you can even uh, hit the button and, and set them to record. And you can do a search. So I typed in a search here for news and it gives me all of the news options that I might have. But you can search for pretty much any show that you want uh, using that search option. So uh, really cool app from CTON. Worth it. I think it's like four or five dollars or something in the app store around that. Uh, but really well worth it because sometimes it can be really difficult and you know, agonizingly horrible to use that remote to try to set up a complicated recording, but uh, this app will do it for you. So that's the update. I haven't really changed much in the configuration at all over the last year because once I set it up, it just started working perfectly. It really wasn't too hard to get going and it's been great ever since. I do recommend that you do have wired ethernet to all of your devices that you're going to connect to the Windows Media Center. It just works better uh, given how many packets this, uh, this operation pushes over your network. I did find that those uh, Mocha devices, which are boxes that allow you to run ethernet over your cable coax wiring, your cable television uh, coax wiring in the house, 
work great as substitutes for Ethernet. If you don't want to run wiring everywhere, uh, those will work great to get everything up and running. But beyond that, this has been really, uh, I'll tell you what, the, probably the best thing I've done in my house uh, in quite some time, and it saves money every single month, and I'm still able to uh, enjoy the, the fruitful benefits of my cable television subscription. So uh, definitely check it out. It will work with over-the-air uh, solutions as well. If you're able to get over-the-air broadcasts where you live, the uh, HD Home Run Prime series of products has one for uh, over-the-air um, connections as well. So it's a slam dunk. Go for it. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.